I am Glam. The objective is simple. Don't die for 100 days. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. I must defeat all bosses at the beta difficulty or higher. Gamma is far too easy in my opinion. Finally, I haven't played on this map since early 2016. So I'm going in with a very fresh perspective. The Overseer didn't even exist when I played, and it will be interesting when we finally meet. Now, let's get it on. Day one, I woke up on the beach of South Zone 1. The Arc Gods have granted me another chance at life, and I immediately decided to make it everyone else's problem. After scavenging the landscape for wood, thatch, hide, meat, and fiber, I crafted a full set of clothes. I was feeling quite refreshed after my last bout in Arc, and decided to show this over-rafter a sick 360 degree spin, before running into this moss chops that desired a simple mejo berry. Mejo berry? Mejo berry. Mayberry. It, it's a berry. At that moment, I made a friend for life. Moss chomps. We immediately got started on pruning everyone else's day. I couldn't fight back, of course. Then I accidentally tamed this pigo. As you can see by the name, I was quite confused. Later that day, I wanted to waste that Bronto that was hanging out on the beach for experience, and possibly some prime meat so I could tame a Tyranodon. Then, I made a really stupid decision. Knock knock, who's there? Your demise? Ah yes. Time for a tactical retreat, says I. That Bronto chased us all down the beach. Mm. I thought we were goners, so I bailed on Ma's chomps. But the Bronto showed mercy. I, however, was not feeling so merciful. After farming all night by camp, I made a few spike walls and a bow with some arrows. I wanted Bronto burgers for dinner. It would not be denied. But first, I had to set up my trap. Honestly, men, this is why women live a lot longer than us. After a long battle with a few very minor incidents, we smote the Bronto on the beach. And to quote a wise scholar, if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. I saddled up on Moz Chomps and prepared for the harvest of a lifetime. I attempted to tame a Pteranodon, but it woke up before I could kill the Bronto. I waited very patiently for it to land and missed Ebola before I restrained it and I sent it to Dreamland. After taming it, I named it Rocky. It was a good, solid name. He flew just like one too. Who could that be down the beach? Is that a low level raptor? It is! Shreddy! You've come back to me! We meet again in another life! Blessed day! Aw, oh, Shreddy, I missed you. Later that night, Shreddy and I went out to explore, and we got ambushed by a few raptors in the dark. Just, just don't go at night, Nark. Don't go out at night, just don't do it. Uh, yeah, I'm still lost. Shreddy's knees were clacking worse than your grandma's dentures at an old-timey horror show. How is she, by the way? I hope she's okay. We needed to get home, and only I could get us there. After wandering at the edge of the beach, we found our way back to camp and I took my frustrations out on a herd of cooking pots for some easy experience and hunted them to extinction. I wanted to start flying and leave the beach as soon as I could manage. I made Rocky a saddle and took to the skies and found this explorer's note. Then decided it was time to get some levels under our belt and I attacked some more Brontos. Things were going well until they weren't. Rocky ended up getting clipped into the body of a Bronto and it, uh, it went as well as you would expect. Alas, poor Rocky. I knew him well. Blood for blood, I suppose. The Bronto stopped attacking me after killing Rocky, so thus commenced my walk of shame, I guess. I found this low-level PT and swallowed my pride, and I tamed it. But I didn't have the heart to give it a terrible name, so I just named it Scout. It was cute. He was tiny. I don't know. I eventually made a forge and some metal tools in a spyglass and went out to explore a bit. Thankfully, I found this level 76 and knocked it on the edge of the Redwoods, the West Colfax of Ark. I also took a moment to appreciate the view. It was very peaceful, and if I do this, it now looks very cinematic, almost like it's an iMac, but this is free, and I'm not going to overcharge you for nonsense. Here we see the little beach bob waiting for his Tyranodon to tape. He sits atop a flimsy mount, a desperate attempt to find something better. I hope it works out. I can't do David Attenborough, please forgive me. Spoiler alert, it did not work out very well. The wonderful peace of the evening hours didn't last too long though. This pesky terror bird, this murder chicken, wanted to eat me and Scout. I know what you're thinking. It's over for me. This is it. Glam's 100 days hardcore. It's done for. After four days, pff, pack it in, bud. It was over for Scout, unfortunately. No, I'm better than that. I bullied this big bird and shot arrows into its noodle. They were trank arrows, but it was either that 
or it was me getting eaten. My new PT tamed at the last minute as the bola broke. I whistled for assistance, and I'm not gonna lie, despite the bravado, I almost did die. If my PT hadn't tamed, the video would have been over. I grabbed the late scout saddle and flew away as fast as I could. I really, really, really hate the redwoods a lot. I sat on this boulder for the rest of the night. As soon as the sun rose, I flew back to camp and began farming turtles to make an Argentavis saddle. As night began to creep over the island, I found this 116 pteranodon and knocked it out. This baryonyx, though, got a little too close for comfort, so Shreddy and I had to deal with it. After taming the 116 PT, I flew to the volcano in the middle of the island to check things out. The last time I played it, it was just nothing but rich metal nodes. It looked quite interesting and very dangerous. Much to my chagrin, I flew back to the redwoods and placed down a classic gateway cage trap. And learning from my mistakes in my previous 100 days, I built them up to code and made sure that Nargi couldn't and wouldn't be able to escape. I'm not sure why all the dino levels on this map are super low. I ticked the maximum difficulty box to make sure they would spawn in at 150, but I guess I need to fix some INI files or something, and I don't want to mess with it right now. After finding a suitable candidate, I flew back to the trap, only to find a Rex just chillin'. Nope, you gotta move man, you're ruining my video. Thanks for your cooperation, good day sir. I got her into the trap with little incident and began tranking her out. I waited for a little bit and froze while she tamed. I was watching some Attack on Titan more videos, I guess, so I named her Sheena. But why settle for just one RG when you can have a breeding pair? I called the RG population around my trap for some prime meat and lured in an eligible bachelor. Huh, that, that kind of came out wrong. Anyway, I knocked it and tamed it. Once the male was up, I named him Marlo. And we four individuals flew back to the volcano to gather some precious resources, like obsidian, and all the metal we could carry. Naturally, this was a taxing errand, and Marlo needed a break. So I begrudgingly landed in the redwoods in a clearing far from any trees. I've seen enough videos of people getting jumped by Thylacolio hanging out in the top of the redwoods, so I had to be smart about this. But uh, oh look at that. Here comes a Gigantopithecus to ruin my day. And he brought a friend. And I got jumped by a Microraptor to boot. Man, I hate the redwoods. Later that day, I wanted to tame a Belze Bufo. They're just giant frogs, basically. They had this unique ability. They ate bugs and turned them into cementing paste, which is really, really necessary for what I needed to do later. I found one that I liked and knocked it out, but it died somehow? Wait a minute, I thought they could breathe underwater. Oh, Ark, don't stop being you. Maybe a piranha got it or something? I don't know. I opted into doing the smart thing and made a taming pen. I found another frog and tamed it up, and I named it Sorbet. You know, you know this is pink. It's getting hot outside, and ice cream sounds nice all the time, to be honest. I took Sorbet into the ocean and farmed for some oil, and avoided some Megalodon. They're really stupid, honestly. And then, to round off the day, I upgraded my fit and made some flak armor. This night fell, and I went out to farm some crystal. A heavy fog rolled in. I wasn't going anywhere in the stuff. It was way too risky, and I felt like I cheated death a few too many times to take any chances. After waiting for a while, the fog did clear, and I combed the beach looking for Hesperonis. These small duck things. They had organic polymer, and I wanted to make some cryopods so I could finally move off of the beach and go live somewhere less beachy, I guess. I found two of them, and that was plenty. I made some pods and began my move. After moving into the hidden lake, wait, what do you mean everyone lives at the hidden lake in their 100 day runs? Well, what do you mean? Oh, well, let me give you an explanation. First of all, it's surrounded by cliffs with three ways in. It's got water in the center with access to beaver dams and fish if you don't build directly on top of the lake. It's a great place for a semi-stress-free base. And I say semi-stress-free, ah well, you'll see. Just gonna have to watch the rest of the video then. I had arrived and evicted this Sarko. After settling in, I found a red drop and we always loot these for better or worse. Day 8 was the day I would go and tame an Ankylosaurus to farm metal and flint. I found this level 60 and took it back to the safety of the lake to tame it. They're really easy honestly. Just run circles around them until they eventually drop and go to sleep. I used moss chomps to farm up some berries for our spiky boy and waited patiently for him to wake up under our servitude. <coughs> I mean, to join our team. I am a good dino parent. After he woke up, I named him Mr. Slam. 
There was a comment about his name in my last video. I named my Yankees Mr. Slam after the bulldozer from Twisted Metal. Speaking of metal, I found this tech parasaur under attack from a wild pack of hyena dawn. I grabbed it before they ate it. I'm not sure the logistics of hyenas eating metal, but I'm sure they would given the opportunity. I took it back to base and tamed it. Now it was just time to tame a dodicarus, and thankfully, I didn't have to go too far from home to find one. After some means of persuasion and a few arrows into his brain, Marco Rolo joined the team. Get it? Because dodicarus roll? <sighs> Anyway, I placed a lot of torches before night so I could see and to repel my arch nemesis of this playthrough. Oh, I gotta whisper. Druidons, I'll hear you. Whom I hate. Also, I can hear my neighbor walking around. I think I'm being too loud. Remember when I said earlier, don't go out at night, Narc? Well, here's another example of Darwinism at work. I flew into the deep ocean at night, and I'll be really honest with you, I nearly pooped myself. But don't worry, I got it sorted. I'm just really lucky there were any megs in the area. I'd be shark chum for sure. I said chum, YouTube algorithm chum. After that small reminder of fragility, I flew back home and decided to finally start building my base. My busy work continued into day 10. I made it to the big Deckham without being flayed alive by some hungry dinosaurs, and I consider this a huge win. I celebrated my luck and success by setting up my base a bit more and farmed for some metal. My reward for such a good job? More intensive labor! Hooray! I continued building my base all through day 11 and placed an industrial grill to solve my cooking troubles. I would never go hungry again. I even managed to tame this stego that was just hanging around. Since he wanted to see what I was up to, I figured I'd give him a job application. I made a generator to power my lair, and with the obsidian we gathered a few days ago, I cut my hair and went from mop to hot in no time at all, and I used the classic ponytail. I was bald for now, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It'll grow back. Yeah. That's what they all say. It'll grow back. <laughs> I took our new stego out for his spin and farmed berries for narcos. He performed his job well and in spades, and it paid out some serious berry dividends. I finished the roof to my house and made a lot of arrows. While we're waiting, go ahead and subscribe. Did you hit the button yet? I'll wait. I went out and about looking for some decent level aloes. On a hill next to my house, I found a group of them playing tag with some stegos and they were using their teeth. It was really chaotic, but one of them didn't fare so well. And then out of nowhere here came this Rex just busting onto the scene. It didn't last too long and neither did this other aloe. When I'm recording, I write down my notes in my handy dandy college ruled notebook. So let's have a look see. It says, uh, frustrating aloe tame. I wonder why. Okay, I got the trap down. So what's the big deal? Oh, she just walked out of the gap the size of my upload schedule. <laughs> and my employment history. I'll admit I was having some flashbacks to my Lost Island video. I really didn't want to risk it for the biscuit, so I stayed high on the ledges. As far as I knew, she couldn't reach me, kinda. After half the day of chasing her around to and fro in this ravine, she finally went down. Sheesh. That was exhausting to rewatch. After she tamed up, she had a decent melee stat. I could make this work. On day 14, I needed a male tech parasaur to exploit. <clears throat> I mean to raise future generations of healthy young. I looked high and low and low and high, and flew to what felt like every corner of the island. And after about searching for approximately 30 minutes, I had finally found one. Level didn't matter, I just needed bodies. One arrow is all it took. I threw some berries into him, and before long he was mine. I began the long flight back home, and stopped for a green drop, and it was garbage. Just as bad as a pizza party at work for performing backbreaking labor. Life is great! Huh, I'm starting to wonder if I have any unresolved issues. Oh well. The very next day I flew around looking for some good tames, and I found this whopper of a 112 aloe, and you best believe I was elated. As you can probably tell by my little camera wiggle, I took care of its entourage and began the chase. I wanted to get this thing as close to home as possible, mostly for my safety of course. After building a billboard trap, I knocked it. Way of K in the air, waiting for it to tame. I think I went to go cook dinner or something. After it tamed, I took it home and introduced the two, and let them get to work. I watched two tech paras make love under the torchlight, making both parties quite uncomfortable. But it was like watching a truck crash on the freeway, you know? You're gonna look if it's there. I got bored watching and decided to act. No, not on them. But I decided to act by making a dedicated pen for this sort of thing. After breaking a sweat, I decided to break this duck with my bare hands. To prove how manly I am, and nothing screams beefcake quite like punching wild animals to death. I leveled my moss chops' special levels, and just watch.
After that bit of silliness, I played around on the frog for a little while. Try to get some cementing paste. On day 17, I got a really trash drop. But other than that, the tech para farm was working as intended. Later that day, I got a decent drop from a yellow crate. I even got this really bad red drop. But the highlight of my day was this exceedingly frustrating aloe tame. This thing aggroed everything and anything and ran up and down the riverbed, which wasn't the problem. The problem is micro raptors. They were swarmed all over the beach. I haven't run into any yet, right here, thank goodness. But later on in this video, yeah, you'll see. You'll see what I mean. But I eventually got it sorted and knocked it out. As a reward for my exceeding patience, I was gifted this decent long neck rifle. Thanks, Ark. I finally got another female ally with some decent stats. I accidentally a lot of babies. Whoops. Well, we wouldn't need metal or oil for a little while at least. I got a decent breeder male and finally got my boss army rolling. Basically, like I said in my last video, you make the babies have babies with the parents. No, we're not going to some sus internet territory. This is a legit mechanic in this game, and it is very necessary. Hey, I'm just playing the game, okay? I didn't make it. I used the rest of the aloes as guard dogs in the yard by the lake. It eased my anxiety a little. I left them on aggressive so they would shred anything that spawned in the area, which was good enough for me. Little did he know that this would be a grave mistake later. I ended up with a lot of raw meat from an unknown source. Hey, where'd all my other baby aloes go? On day 19, I wanted a passive polymer farm. As far as I knew, penguins were the only way to go. So I saddled up and flew to the snow biome. I didn't use trank darts. Oops, I found an EXP note and got this bone skin. Huh, well, that's new. After that, I unalived some penguins for their poly. Hello, little penguin. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Die! I borrowed a penguin to take home, and on the way back, we stopped by a river for a red drop and some quick rest. I made the mistake of letting these tech paras grow up, and I hit one with my sword. That was a mistake. They started going wild and killed the penguin, but I did what I had to be done, and I accidentally ended my breeder female in the process and was left with two males. Whoops. I went out to find a replacement and found this nice 110 female and tamed her up. All's well. The big day 20. We're now 20% done with this challenge and I was living quite comfortably at this point. But an entertaining 100 days hardcore video while sitting safely in base does not one make. Don't worry. I got a nice reality check when this theory dropped into my base from above and started attacking my teams. I got this really bad red drop. Like really terrible. I tamed two penguins with darts finally, and I gotta say, this poly farm is working great. On day 21, I did more chores and got really bored of hanging around the house all day. I expanded the pen a little bit. It was too cramped. I'll ignore that imperfection like I ignore most of the glaring problems in my life. I want my dinos to be as comfortable as they possibly can in their final moments on this arc before they cozy up and get really comfortable on my grill. It was time to gather more crystal and I would be bringing back a lot. I didn't want to have to go farm it for a few days if I could afford to. I crafted some air conditioning units and placed them in the two corners in my pen. I only needed a few. The ones in my house would heat the other corner, giving me full coverage. No egg would go unwarm and unloved. You know what this place could use? More torches! The dark is our enemy. I rounded off the day by making a hatchery assistant. Basically, what this little dodo would do, do, I, I mean, do is collect eggs from all the dinos that were fertilized and save me the extra calories and having to pick them up myself. Now that's pretty glamorous. But to power that little hatchery assistant, I needed to tame a dung beetle. So today I looked up where to get one and there was a cave next to my dojo that had some. I flew over and went in. I immediately got some bad vibrations and my chi became unbalanced and my chakra was upset. It was quite foreboding and honestly I'm glad I listened to reason. After I swam through the icy cold water in the dark, I heard a bat shriek and that was all the confirmation I needed. But unfortunately, I was really in need of a dung beetle, so I didn't give up. When in doubt, YouTube guided out. I learned that there were quite a few safe tames in the southern cave on the island, so I potted up an aloe and sallied forth on my way to beetle gains. Honestly, who knew aloes were really decent caving dinos? They were like mini rexes, but with a better turn radius. Nothing would attack you on one, although there were some tight squeezes here and there, uh, but we managed. I thought while I was in the neighborhood, I'd grab this artifact too. Minimal effort, just how I like it. After taming a dung beetle and nabbing the artifact, I left for home. I crafted pre-fertilizer to power the hatchery assistant. Yes, it's all coming together now. Today I wanted to try and tame a tapijara, 
because they could easily move in six directions, they were a nice middle ground between a Tyranodon and an Argentavis. But the bonus is that they could grip onto walls, allowing you to rest comfortably for a moment without getting jumped. I eventually found one and stressfully tamed it. After that really unnecessary rigor rigmarole, I hatched more baby aloes. He got a male with a health mutation. That means his health is some points higher than his predecessor. But alas, like an apple product, he will be replaced with one that is better in a few days, I'm sure. Don't get too attached. Oh no, he'll live. I need him just in case my breeding operation goes awry somehow, and I need to start over from scratch. Like I said, he was basically an Apple product and was replaced not more than 24 hours later. Tough break, man. For me, it's lucky. For him, not so much. What's even crazier is I got him from the first egg I threw down, but I was in bad need of cement him first and foremost. I found this beaver dam, but it really wasn't worth the hassle. In my notes, it just says disaster. Oh yeah, I see why. I went AFK to go talk to my brother about the success of my last video. Go watch it after this one, by the way. It's a real banger. And I'm not just saying that because I made it. Actually, yeah, I am. I AFK'd a bit longer than I intended to. And then a bunch of dinos grew up. And I decided to cull some of the dinosaurs hanging around the shop. Some heavily mutated baby aloes grew up without starving to death. And well, yeah, a lot of my teens died to vicious aloe activity. I thought this was a safe neighborhood. My, how times change. Can't even leave your front door unlocked anymore. I got the situation under control though. It's crazy to think the only thing between me and those heavily mutated aloes was this flimsy little stone pen. I'm really glad I didn't cut corners on this design. My 100 days would have been ended 26 hours into the playthrough. I picked up the pieces and pushed forward, but I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't feel a little defeated. Regrettably, the footage for day 27 got corrupted. I use Bandicam to record and it's usually good about fixing it, but I only have like one second of footage, so check it out, I guess. But all I can tell you is that Aloe McBeal, my personal Aloe assistant mount, and I ran down the river farming keratin and farming tributes. It was a grand old time. I even got an Allosaurus blueprint from one of the drops. I'm really mad I can't show that to you. So instead, here's day 28, I guess. To make up for that lost footage, Aloe McBeal and myself ran down the river looting beaver dams for cementing paste. It was faster and more efficient than farming some with stone and chitin. I was also very lazy. We didn't find any, but I got lost exploring instead, and honestly I took a moment to appreciate the island once again, from the safety of my Allosaurus. On foot this would have been a real nightmare, and really terrible. I'd probably be gator poop right now, honestly. We managed to get a great deal of tributes for the bosses, mostly Sarko skins and Titanoboa venom, and some Megalania toxin here and there. These would be very important for later. I also tamed a new Dodicarus to replace Marco Rolo. So on day 29, that new health mutation male didn't last too long again, and was swiftly replaced by someone younger, more talented, and goal-oriented who would work for cheaper. I spent most of the day farming stone with my new Doed rollout. I saw a new Tapajara. I tried to tame it, and tame it I did. I named him Tapatio because I really like the sauce. I also killed my first alpha of the playthrough, not to brag or anything. The loot was okay, I guess. Wow, it's really crazy to think that I survived a month now on the island. And to celebrate this immense milestone, I decided to go out and level Tapatio some. After that, I made a lot more refertilizer for the hatchery assistant. Later that day, I accidentally killed this 120 mega ethereum, and a part of my soul died with it. I'm not gonna lie. I also wanted to tame a mammoth to replace Mighty the Beaver that met an unfortunate end. I needed a lot of wood. I found one. It was okay, I guess. It was just gonna be a harvesting dino, so I didn't really care about the level. As I was waiting for the mammoth to tame, I went for this really garbage red crate. It got very cold. My health started to drop like a sack of bricks. No joke, I almost died. Another close call to add to the tally. If I didn't build these campfires and use this torch, I would have been a glam popsicle. Just in time too, a snowstorm hit. I decided to stay around the base and upgrade some of the base defenses a little bit in the shape of some very welcoming spiked walls. MORE WALLS! Hopefully this will deter some of the unwanted guests from suddenly showing up unannounced, and hopefully my landlord. This is actually a cry for help, my entire income goes to rent. Just a few more placed with love and care to keep the bad things away. There. It is done, and it looks quite nice. Look, okay, the objective is to survive 100 days, not do some insane base builds. I mean, you can do that if you want, I'm not going to. Whatever helps me cope and ignore my problems, ha ha! In the wee morning of day 32, I tamed this Fiomia. This handsome creature would generate lots of poop for me. Well, not for me, personally, but for my compost bins and my dung beetle. 
With his help, I would not want for poop ever again. Later, I was out and about stealing from beaver dams and stealing body parts like a good little arc citizen. When I chanced upon this absolutely bonkers 120 thylacolio. Only Australia could produce something so terrifying yet so fluffy. I ran home and built a trap with the utmost of import. When the sun rose, I left my base, crossbow in hand, and flew to the redwoods to find that wascally little thyla. Basically retraced my steps from the day prior, and picked it up to carry it with my RG back to base. Because I really, really, really hate the redwoods. Listen to me, you have no idea. I'd rather risk losing my RG for this thing than sit 30 minutes in the redwoods biome to try and tame it. Also, here's a neat trick. If you fly at a certain angle, the thyla won't be able to hit you, so it won't cause a lot of bleed damage. I would use this technique and force feed my bird a few times to get home safely. It took a long time. But like I said, it was better than sitting in the redwoods any day. If my RG got too bloody, I would just drop the thylo nearby and feed my RG some meat or scavenge corpses for the health regen boost. It wasn't too terrible, but it got a little dicey at times. I got it into the trap and forced crossbow bolts into its brain. And I forced it to follow me or be turned into tribute. He listened. And Ty, the cornerstone of this playthrough, was tamed. Ty and myself got to know each other very well by making more meat with some baby dinos. He was a bogan through and through, but he was very pleasant to be around. I enjoyed the time we spent together. Later that day we decided to go for a quick jaunt in the snow biome. I knew where one Alvacarno was and I wanted his arm for a tribute. We ran around for a bit and climbed up the side of this mountain for a quick yellow drop. Hmm. Not too shabby. And down below, we found our prize. After a little scuffle, a little kerfuffle, we got feared by this UD. And well, that was the first and last mistake of that UD's life. But since I wasn't wearing fur, my health was dropping and I needed to leave ASAP. But how could I pass up a rich opportunity to take down another alpha? After killing it, we ran home. I made it back with just a sliver of health. There was a nice surprise waiting for me. A green penguin. I liked it so much, I spared it my chainsaw and named it Baja Blast. Whew, it only took 35 days. I finally got an Indy Forge made. It took a lot of baby tech parasaurs and a lot of penguins, but it was finally done. And I could do away with these old archaic relics. Ugh. I went out and farmed more metal, came back home and found another health mutation, and used the last of my resources to make a chem station, then used the final bits of polymer I had lying around to craft me a pump. It wasn't going to rip holes in the universe or anything, but it was miles better than beating ducks to death with my bare fists. After a lot of baby hatching and, well, steak making, I got a baby with a really cool mutation. I liked it so much I decided to keep it. It was a lovely shade of orange. I initially thought it was red because I'm colorblind. I did another metal run because I was desperate and didn't want to wait for babies to grow up. I spotted this high level Tapajara female and tried to tame it so I could have a breeding pair, but it went oh so horribly wrong. She was never seen again. I don't know what I did to be this lucky, but I got another health mutation and I found a really nice ascendant sword blueprint. Well done. Then I got this compound bow and a red drop. That's it. That's day 37. My house is looking alright, but I could do more with it, so I decided in the spirit of spring cleaning to spruce the place up a bit. I made myself an industrial cooker, I placed it outside for picnics, and made some crop plots finally. I would be eating vegetables and avoiding scurvy in no time at all. Finally, I finished the greenhouse, but I was going a little stir-crazy from all the building, so I went out and about to pilfer some cementy paste from, from, from some irascible beavers. I also decided to do a little bit of exploration since I was out and farmed for more tributes to round out the adventure. After getting my fill, I flew home. Remember at the start of the video when I said this is the exact reason why women live longer than men? It wasn't to be cute. It wasn't to be political. I'm not trying to make a statement, but it's a genuine fact. Just watch this clip and tell me that this is a good idea. I stalked the jungles next to my house to bow hunt, Turok style. I got ambushed by this raptor, and honestly, I don't know why I didn't just smack it with my sword. Jeez, Glam, come on, man. I spotted a Truodon in the clearing. I snuck up on it. Just watch. I got really, really lucky. I finished off the day by making even more steak. I was eating good. Early in the morning on day 41, I opened this yellow crate and got a really nice ascendant crossbow blueprint, as well as this pike. 
I normally don't really use pikes, so the pike was kind of eh. But I would definitely be using this blueprint in my future endeavors. Normally, I don't really risk going to grab these things in the dark, especially on a more hardcore run, but hey, it beats sitting in base and hiding until the sun comes up. As you can see, my tapiara was getting bitten a few times by this little rascal Dilophosaur. I flew back to base and opened this drop and emotionally heaved. You insult my vanity and my pride. I did a bit more hatching before sunrise and decided to go and farm, so I could finally build a behemoth gate on the western side of the lake. To finish it off, I placed some stone foundations to act as walls. I did more hatching and had a few workplace accidents. I made some preparations and explored the cave on Carno Island for some loot and caught rabies for my troubles. The loot was kind of trash, but you know what isn't trash? Ty's caving capabilities. I cannot rant and rave about this man enough. I went to grab the artifact and got scared of the spider, so I swatted it. I grabbed the artifact and left. Once again, mammoth saddles plague me, even when I'm not on the Lost Island. The next day, my main project in animal husbandry paid off again. I finally had another health mutation male. It wasn't all rosy cheeks and baby smiles with puppies and kittens, though. I had a lot of refuse to get rid of. Hello, little babies. Welcome to your new life. So many possibilities lay before you. No! Ty! Bad! I was decked out in fur because I wanted to go get another artifact. The artifact of the Sky Lord. In the cave I would be spelunking was quite literally a frozen hell, filled to the brim with bats, bottomless pits, and other horrors waiting to happen. So, Walmart basically. But I, Glam, would not be another statistic, and I would not end up in a YouTube video detailing some gruesome fates while caving. Now, the only problem was finding this place. Well, this was it. Into the mouth of hell. I took my time going through the cave. Nervous, because at any second I could die. If I slipped, it would be all over. So I inched my way closer to the chasm. Nice one. I grappled over the death trap and made my way out. With a heavy sigh of relief, I got on Tapatio and flew home as fast as I could. The overseer didn't like that theft, because that night before settling in, he sent an alpha raptor as a little reminder. Sheena unfortunately died, as well as my tech parasaur. And even the theory got into the mix. My spiked walls weren't enough. Well, looks like I was in the market for another Argentavis, and went out with Ty to find one. We got into a few scuffles on the side of the mountain, but it was pretty much light work. Not long after, we found a decent candidate. He was only level 56, but at this point I wasn't too picky. But first, we needed to lure it down from the sky. This Sabretooth was very happy to volunteer. After shooting the Argentavis a few times, it tried to flee. We both were hot on its trail. After it went down, this Microraptor and its friend had something to say about it apparently. Ah, this zone was hot. It was active with all sorts of nuisance predators. They were all dealt with so we could tame it in peace. And I went on a taming spree and spotted this low-level Rex, who would help me produce fodder for extra meat, experience, and eventually kibble when I tamed a female. Didn't even break a sweat. I also needed a new tech parasaur to replace the one I lost. I finally placed down the behemoth gates in case I tamed something bigger down the road. It could easily pass through now. Plus, it would keep most things out. I felt a little safer now. The small cliff by the lake offered some nice natural defense as well. After, I started more breeding. This wood sign is a reminder of my current aloe's health stat, so I would know what to look out for, and basically anything higher than that number and health points is a keeper. On day 45, I had a mission. I needed to tame a queen bee for some honey so I could make some various recipes like veggie cakes and kibble for taming. Also as backup nourishment if I really needed it. After making some grappling hooks and with my dart gun in case I needed to do some taming later, I left for the day. None of the hives near my house had any residence. <sighs> so I needed to go into my favorite place of the entire playthrough. Anything involving the redwoods isn't good. You'll see. After poking around some beehives, we found nothing. I saw a carno in the distance and remembered I brought Allo McBeal, my Allosaurus. I had just uncryoed her when a carno stomped up behind me. We searched the redwoods all day for an active hive and nothing. Until we hit some liquid gold finally. I needed to destroy this hive to lure the queen out. Got knocked off of Tapatio and hit the ground really hard. I also had some softball sized bees chasing me, so I crouched to stay low to the ground and let Allo McBeal and Tape sort out my mistakes. Tape was taking way too much damage, so I crowded him up and waited for Allo McBeal to clean the shop, but she just vanished without a trace. 
she bur she Bermuda triangled. She left. She scooped. She's gone. She went like my dad to the store and never came back. She Houdinied on me. Just gone. I and I never found her through the rest of the playthrough. By the way, and I looked. I even got up high to have a look and whistled a few times in the area. She was just gone. I decided to continue with the mission anyway. I had come this far and. Honestly, I should have just packed it up and went home because it didn't end well. It's my fault, I admit. Well, now I was stranded in the redwoods alone with some angry bees. I ran out of ammo as well. Eventually, the bees left me be. So I gathered what I could from Toppy's corpse and headed back home on foot. Of course, I tried whistling for McBeal, but she didn't heed my call. The next day, I thought I'd take a crack at getting another queen bee. This time I took Ty out for a spin, and I gotta say, he performed this task in spades. I figured out this trick, to where if I stand on top of a rock and jump, and if I time the attack just right, it would do massive damage to the bees, and Ty would mop them up. In no time at all, I got my first queen bee ever. It was stressful, and I lost two companions over it, but no price is too great for gold. Since I had some leftover honey, I decided I'd tame my first dire bear too. I've never tamed one of these before. And I needed it just in case I needed to come back and get honey from these hives for like whatever reason. Dire bears are resistant to bee stings and it would be very useful. I mostly stayed around the property today and I decided to level my dire bear. I called him Boog. It was a fitting name, I think. His damage was kind of bad, but he had spirit. I'll give him that. I always look tired. I got a white owl mutation. And looking back, I am very disappointed in myself that I killed it. I had the color mutations to make a panda aloe if I wanted. Shame. I did, however, have some mutations to make orange, blue, and cyan? I think that's the other color. It would be my vanity aloes. Something to stand out. Not the bees! Ah! If I wanted to do the bosses on beta, and possibly alpha, maybe if I could squeeze it in, I needed a healer too. This map doesn't have snow owls, and in my last playthrough I used a snow owl, so Deodons would have to do. Deodons are basically pigs that eat meat and heal your teams, so just like normal pigs. Who said bacon was bad for you? Clearly not, but what is bad for you is all the low level spawns on this map. Jeez. Finally, I found this level 108 and decided it would be good enough. So I snatched it and brought it home to tame. They put up a fight, but I always get what I want. You'll succeed on YouTube when pigs fly, Glam. Oh yeah? Well, who's laughing now? Do you have 500 subscribers and nearly 1,000 hours of people watching your videos? Yeah, I didn't think so, Dad. I missed the trap and the yard owls got to it. Oops. Well, here we go again, I guess. It's alright though, it was a slam dunk. I found a 112 male and thankfully got it into the trap before the aloes could get to it. But I wasn't done yet. After putting him to sleep, I needed him a female. I found one and knocked her out, then got them tamed. Spamila and Count Hamkula. They had joined the team and I let them get to know each other a little better. Today I farmed for tributes. Basically what those are who don't play Ark. Hi mom, hi heart, hi Fen, hi Pri, hi Hiko, hi Nem, hi my brother, hi my dog, probably my neighbor that somehow found my channel by accident. Tributes are necessary to progress through the barriers in this game. I need various body parts to unlock a portal to a specific boss arena. Since I wanted to do the beta and beyond, I needed a lot of body parts. I put the laughter in slaughter. Hey Boog, you better not touch that hive. Boog, no. I'm watching you, Mr. Bear. Can you see me? No? That's because I am of the wind itself. The great white ninja of legend. Just kidding, I'm in a bush. And I'm wearing gilly. Honestly, if PvP wasn't absolute cheeks in this game, it'd probably be a cool stealth rate of base. It was down to the wire now. Last call for Allosaurus mutations. I managed to get seven in this playthrough. I'll explain mutations and all that stuff in a guide in the future if y'all want. It's kind of complicated, but kind of not. And all the guides I see on YouTube are just kind of long-winded and they don't get to the point. 
Anyway, I wanted to fight the beta brood mother very soon and had to call it quits with the husbandry in this playthrough. I also finished my vanity yellow, orange, blue, and I, I'm still unsure if that's cyan or not. Might be. I just thought it would look cool as opposed to the boring dino colors. Plus they were complimentary. See who said Nart Major was a waste of time. <laughs> Uh, every day is an inescapable void of the pressures and failure crushed down like a tidal wave. I didn't do much on day 51. I just stood around and started breeding my Alice together to make my super soldiers. But while we're waiting on that, I wanted to give thanks and show gratitude to all of you watching. When someone in my personal life said, No one's going to watch you play Ark. No one's going to watch you play these 100 days videos. I almost believed them. And this series almost didn't happen. This channel existed before then regardless. I used to be an art channel, but no one was watching my stuff. And as soon as I started doing what I wanted to do, these art videos, you all started coming along. 500 of you legends. So here we are now, queens and kings. I thank you. And it means a lot. Anyway, while waiting for my army to grow, I decided to run this lava cave. People recommend a baryonyx for this kind of task. But personally, I think a thylo worked just fine. As we made our way down, to the fiery abyss, I masterfully used my bow skills, and I dispatched any foe that got in my way. For the ones that didn't go down so easily, I used Ty to take care of them. Make no mistake, if I fall into this lava, the playthrough, and 60 hours of my mortal life, be all for nothing. Carefully, I tiptoed as best as I could, but here comes the part where I was super nervous. One overshoot, and it would be all over. I made the leap of faith and almost slipped. Then this Megalania jumped down and fell in. Had it hit me, it would have pushed me over the edge. I used the Molten Rock to my advantage. The ones that wouldn't fall into the pit, we killed. I made my way around the bend, and I could finally see the artifact. I proceeded with utmost care. Before long, the artifact of the massive was mine. I found my way out of hell, and felt the rush of cold air on my face once again. I ran the central cave today, and instead of Ty, I opted to take one of my super aloes instead. I saw an alpha carno that needed an attitude adjustment. I needed some experience to help level my aloe. 30 levels, hmm, not too shabby. After we were ready, I went for the cave. The only reason why I'm not dead right now is because of my ghillie armor and some bug repellent. If I went with flak, I'd be canned food, honestly. But the path was heavy with some opposition. So I worked out a system. I'd lure the bads in with my pump and use my aloe to take care of the brunt. After making my way deeper into the cave, I walked into the water and then I was sworn by piranha. One wasn't a problem, but there was a ton and it was looking kind of bad. Well, not doing that again. And then I proceeded to do it again. I made my way up and out of the cave. I took pity on this poor little monkey. This was no place for something so cute. I offered berries in exchange for friendship and she agreed, but I, Hey, wait a minute, something's been- Oh, the artifact! Oh no, son of a- <laughs> Mother- Okay, now we're good. I needed a Uteranus to bring out the A game in my army. If you're into sports ball, think of the big fuzzy chicken as a cheerleader, or possibly the coach. I found a few low level ones in the snow, but they were all very terrible. Till I flew into this immaculate 116. Took care of her entourage and had a moment. I started tranking her out, and she started a torpor run. And believe me, everything in Ark did not want me to have this Uteranus today. She ran into the ocean, and I was about to just call it quits. But nah, I was in the bargaining stage. I even engaged in an amphibious combat to keep her safe. It was very erratic in her movements, and it was very stressful. I missed a lot of shots, and eventually I ran out of darts. So what would you do? Pack it up and go home? Or would you just punch it until it passed out? Here's what I did, and surprisingly it worked. By the gods, she wasn't drowning. It was a Christmas miracle. I stayed with her until she tamed. Welcome home, Shriek. I went out to farm some metal and prepare for the broodmother fight. I needed to make ammunition, saddles and armor, and other various things to aid in battle. I thought I heard some stomps and... Oh yep, yeah, there was a giga on top of that mountain, just waiting for me. I got spooked really hard and flew up in an evasive maneuver, but thankfully it ran off the side of the mountain. I farmed for the rest of the day. On day 56, I drank a mind wipe, and I began leveling my crafting skill and rolled the dice with some RNG. Then I leveled my aloes a bit more. I spent all of day 57 preparing for a cave run. I was going to attempt to run one of the swamp caves, and I spent all day preparing for it. I farmed for some black pearls and other resources so I could craft a few gas masks. One of these caves would slowly poison you to death if you went in unprepared, and I didn't want that to happen. 
and landed at the cave entrance and put on my gas mask. Oh, silly me, turns out this is the wrong cave for that. Regardless, I pushed forward thinking that if I took my mask off, I was going to die. Here, I'll turn up the gamma so you can see. It was very dark for me. After finding some runes and grabbing an explorer note, I took the plunge and dove through the water into the treacherous underwater caverns. I eventually got to a spot where Ty couldn't go, so I potted him up and swam for it. But I couldn't see the Sarko at the time. You know what you're thinking. Glam's gonna die. It's over. There's no way you can survive this. Wrong. I grappled at the last second. At that moment, sanity prevailed, and I went home immediately, defeated. At day 59, I made some final preparations for the Broodmother fight. Made sure my allies were ready, armor repaired, food cooked, and health brews brewed. It was finally the big day. Two months ago, I was wandering the beach in the dark, aimless. And now here we are, fighting our first beta boss. I own cryo the troops at the Green Obelisk, and then cryo sick them. I took Shriek and went out to harvest meat for Alok Ma the Deodon, the son of Hamkula. He was going to be our healer for this run. After about 30 minutes of courage roaring, the army was ready to go. I flipped the switch, and before we knew it, in a flash of light and a blink, we were standing in the boss arena. Huh, I'm not sure why it's so bright, I didn't make it like this. Anyway, I made my army charge in, while Shriek roared, and I fired arrows true into the monster's hide. Before long, the brood mother had succumbed, and we stood victorious. After loading up the aloes and the obelisk, I flew home and planted my flag of victory, then displayed her head on my wall. First thing on day 61, I opened a red chest and received a new compound bow. I would be using it graciously for the rest of my time on this island. I bred my deodons to make another baby. More meat for the grinder, eh? I needed to run that cave that I bailed on a few days ago for that artifact. I didn't want to, but it was very necessary for my progression. Turns out, there's a secret tunnel you could just climb into. I didn't even need to go into those water tunnels of doom. Crazy, right? It's almost like they reward exploration. Honestly, I'm mad at myself for not doing this in the first place. Anyway, I grabbed the artifact and I left. I needed to go into the ocean eventually. I needed something to help me traverse this new frontier. And so, I settled on two low-level dolphins, and I took them home and made them breed. I also thought I'd give fishing a crack, and yeah, just like real life fishing, it's kind of boring. And it kind of sucks. That's just my opinion though. If you like fishing, then good. Personally, I'm not a fan. The dolphins had a baby, and I'd use this baby to tame a whale. After that baby grew up, I took my first foray into the deep ocean and killed some sharks for easy levels. Wow, this game is so realistic. Did you know that in the real world, dolphins murder sea life for fun? Here's an educational fact. All the self-proclaimed YouTube gurus that tell me how to grow my YouTube channel tell me to teach people in my videos to engage the audience, so there's some knowledge. I found a cave that at the time I didn't know was an artifact cave, and yeah, I fear for my fragile life and left after exploring. I'm glad this dolphin was very speedy, because I'd be chum for sure. Chum, YouTube algorithm, chum. After that unnerving exploration, I tamed a female rex. Found a decent level whale, and uh, I was looking at the footage, and I can't find it, but it was the 120 male Bessilo, and I ended at Moby. Sorry, I really looked. Like, here's the footage of me checking it out. I went home and made some kibble for it. On day 64, I decided to go fight this alpha giant squid head on. It wasn't going very well, and I decided to make a tactical retreat. I killed the sharks that were helping the squid, and spent the next 40 minutes healing the whale by force feeding it some tilapia. I looked everywhere for that alpha too, so but I couldn't find it at all. I searched high, and I searched low. I searched to, and I searched fro. All over the area. Nothing. I guess it just despawned. I gave up and decided to check out that cave that I'd visited. Like most problems, I just ignored anything that was chasing me. I swam down a hidden tunnel, and I grabbed the artifact that lay within, at the heart of a sunken ruin. Huh. If someone knows the lore of this place, leave a comment down below, I'd be very interested in finding out. I spent the rest of the day hunting down alphas for black pearls and tributes I'd probably need in the future. I killed this very scary alpha mosasaur with immense difficulty. It did a lot of damage, and we almost died. But my unwavering perseverance prevailed. Yeah, Moby helped, I guess. I swam to the surface and started healing Moby again. Later, I killed this Alpha Lead Zixith. 
He leads like this. Leads the, this giant fish. I also managed to kill a Tuso. I can't find the footage, but it's here in my notes. On day 67, I headed to the hard water cave to fetch the artifact of the brute. I saw this level 80 Mosasaur that was stuck against the wall. And calm down, calm down. No, no step sibling jokes here. And I decided I'd try and trank it out. I thought I could potentially tame it for some reason. After a few tranks, it fell asleep and I left the cave to find some meat to feed it. But as I filled its inventory, turns out you really can't tame cave dinos. But sometimes you can? I, I don't understand. Oh well, so I let Moby eat it. I made my way to the artifact room, looked around for safety, and grabbed it, and then I left. No point in sticking around here. On day 68, I slowly flew home. Huh. Well, that's all I recorded, apparently. On the funny number day, I spent the majority of it prepping for the Megapithecus fight. I grabbed my soups, some med brews, and an extra aloe. And my new Deodon, Porkham Knight. And flew to the Blue Obelisk. I began lining everyone up on the platform. It was finally time to fight the Megapithecus and the snow peaks on the mountains. The teleportation bubble encroached us, and then we were in. I ran to the crumbled sanctuary he called home and politely let him know we were here. He didn't like that a whole lot and chased me. I whistled attack my target, and then we started going to work. This fight was a complete joke, honestly. Once we got him surrounded, it was over. I uploaded my dinos once again and took my spoils home. Two down, two to go. I hung his head high in my temple. I spent the day flying all over the island to gather the artifacts necessary to do the brood mother on alpha difficulty. On day 72, I found myself back in the deep ocean to farm up some Tussos and other alphas for pearls and their body parts. I eventually wanted to make some tech armor, and I'd need a plethora of precious pearls. The tech armor would put me at an increased advantage in any situation with its unique abilities that I'll show you later. I farmed under the ocean all day for day 72, and I capped it off with fighting this Alpha Tuso, and got blinded by his ink more times than I really care to admit. In this instance, I wish I had a tech rifle so I could have just shot the darn thing from a distance and not have to play chase with this overgrown slab of calamari waiting to happen. Eventually I did catch it, and put it down. After my little romp in the ocean blew, I flew to the green obelisk and initiated the Alpha Broodmother fight. Full disclosure, all of my allies were equipped with Mastercraft saddles. I looked around with the footage of the blueprint and I could not find it. I'm sure if my allies didn't have these saddles, and they didn't have anything better than primitive, they and myself would probably be dead right now. Anyway, I stood on the back of my Yudi and fed arrows into her to help out with the DPS. After a stressful minute and loss of Pork of Night, unfortunately, she went down, and I learned the tech helmet and gram. I would absolutely need this helmet in the days to come. It allowed you the ability to see at night and through walls, as well as detecting enemies at a distance. And it doubled as a scuba tank. I spent most of the day farming for metal and meat to heal my dinos and to make sure they wouldn't starve out. Most of their food was getting pretty low, and I didn't want to lose all of my current progress due to procrastination and negligence. The reason for all the metal is because I wanted to finally build my tech replicator so I could get my armor built as soon as possible. And eventually make some tech canteens because they are absolutely a godsend. It was time to go get the artifact of the immune. And boy was I in for a world of hurt. These dragonflies did hurt. A lot. And they were in massive swarms. I wish I had a Megatherium. Don't get me wrong, Ty's great and all, but jeez. This was cutting it close. Ty was poisoned pretty badly and wouldn't regain his stamina by waiting around, so I potted him up and used my bow to help clear the path. I made my way into the central chamber and got a little more than I had bargained for. Ty only survived with a small sliver of health. Then out of nowhere, another Meganura swarm. I thought we were dead meat, so I ran. We escaped just. I could hear the artifact thrumming in the walls. Before I knew it, we were here. I snuck up and grabbed the artifact and we ran. We ran from the cave as fast as we could. 
fresh, breathable air once again. We had one of the final artifacts. On day 77, I had another close call with a true dawn. After that, I went to the green obelisk to grab three of my aloes to venture into the hard ice cave. This would be my biggest challenge yet. I logged in and switched to PvE mode, so my dinos wouldn't get cryo sick when I unfroze them. It's kind of cheesy, but hey, I'm not taking chances. I made it to day 77, I ain't risking it for the biscuit, son. I'm a pretty smart ape, and ape want banana, so ape go pick low-hanging fruit from banana tree. While waiting for Ty to heal, I noticed more colorful dinos on the island. I think it was because of the Easter event or something, so I decided to go do some taming. An Argy, a Trike, a Fairy, and finally a Dire Wolf. Then I hatched a lot of babies for various purposes. Today was the day where I would run the Hard Ice Cave. I crawled through the icy crag and threw out my aloes. Just in time too, a polar bear had lumbered right up to us. I stayed low and let my aloes do the talking for me. Of course, I would help where I could. The waters in this cave were so cold they damaged you simply by touching it. We made our way deep into the cave and cleared each corridor slowly and methodically. I couldn't afford any mistakes especially not this far into the playthrough. I lured the enemies from the ledge into our triad of death. We were on the final stretch now. Just a few more polar bears, apes, and wolves stood between me and my prize. We got it sorted, and I grabbed the artifact. Then we left. Not before I had a few close calls with cave residents, though. Unfortunately, one of my aloes sank into the cold water. I couldn't pull it out. I'm sorry, little one. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. We fought our way up and out. I'm just glad I wouldn't have to run this cave again. Not for a while, at least. Running that cave took all of day 78, and it dipped a little into day 79. I finally wanted to get my tech replicator up and running, and I ended up culling a lot of penguins for that polymer. That's a strange thing to think about. Futuristic weapons and armor are made from the fat of penguins. <laughs> what a silly notion. <laughs> Hello, little penguins. Die! I was initially going to do the boss today, but I decided to give myself a little time. Cleaned up a little and moved some dinos around. I also tried to kill some baby rexes for extra experience, but I forgot it was on PvE. Hold, please. Ah, that's better. Day 81, not a whole lot happened. I went out and farmed more meat and waited for my aloes to heal up. I headed to the Red Obelisk and got my army sorted for the upcoming dragon fight. I had most of the tributes at the ready. All except for the, uh, the Giga Heart. Great. I headed home and flew around the mountains. I eventually found this nice looking Giga in the snow. It's a shame. In an alternate universe, I would have tamed it. I lured it into the ravine next to my base, and it walked up on the hill a few times. And that made me really nervous. Gigas can break through stone, and terrorize tames, and are very aggressive. I'd 100% lose everything if that thing broke into my base. I managed to kind of get it trapped, and began firing arrows into its thick hide. The Giga started to get really bloody after some time and it was about to die when this Carno rolled up. If the Giga died near it, it would run over and eat the corpse, and I didn't want to potentially lose out on the heart. So I did what had to be done. A few arrows more, and I felled the mighty beast. I proved myself as a hunter this day. On day 83, I finally fought the dragon. As we teleported into the arena, the music swelled. The dragon flew overhead, and I gotta say it was pretty flames. No. Literally, the arena was hot, and I was dying. The dragon rained down fireballs from above, and I did my best to help my aloes and myself avoid it. I got burned a few times as the dragon landed, and I lost a few aloes. But I knew going in that there would be casualties. But that mythical beast was no match for my dream team. We secured that dub. We put it down, and I earned its head for tribute. The next day, I farmed meat to feed my Daedon so they could heal up my aloes. I also made some replacements for the aloes that fell in battle. This is why I love the tech leggings. You can run at high speeds, and if you hit anything going at high speed, it either broke 
where I turned into red Kool-Aid. This was way faster than using an RG and a Pteranodon. I would be using this method to get around everywhere now. I went into the deep ocean to farm even more black pearls. You can never have enough, especially on the island. I ventured into the underwater cave again to try and kill some Tuso, but once again the voice of reason prevailed and I left quite expediently. I returned home to farm more metal, and on top of the mountain, this Rex wouldn't leave me alone. So I did the manliest thing I could think of and punched it to death with my tech gloves. Also this nosy Argentavis. After farming my fill of metal, I went home and made a lot of ammo with a tech replicator and dispensed some American justice on some dinos. The next day I found an Alpha Rex terrorizing the swamp and decided now is a good time to test this ascended sniper rifle. And this, this is why the tech helmet was a crucial piece of equipment. This monster could not hide. I could see its every move, even through the thick swamp brush. Spanish moss wasn't going to save this monster. I put it down and rewarded its tooth, a key for the tech cave. I farmed even more materials to make even more ammo. I wanted to be well stocked for the tech cave. This cave was full of deadly dinosaurs and I needed enough guns and ammunition to turn the cave into a parking lot. This took all day. In the depths of the tech cave, it would be a frozen hell, and I needed a scarf. The best thermal control on the go would be an otter. So I ran around looking for one, and found one I did, swimming around by the redwoods. I killed some fish and offered them as tokens of friendship for this cute little fella. He liked it so much, he joined me. I named it PB and J, from that one show when we were kids, you know. I know, sometimes my genius even scares myself. I found this high level tech rex wandering around at the base of a mountain. And, hmm, yeah, I could use that. So I lured it home. After a few minutes of cat and mouse, I led it into the ravine next to my base, went home, and gathered my crossbow to knock it out. I wanted to do the alpha ape again for more element, so I dived into the ocean to fetch the artifact of the brute once again. Then I spent the rest of the day farming for black pearls. No joke when I said, you can't get enough, I really mean it. In the lost island, they practically gave you black pearls. Here, well, uh, no, you gotta work for him. I managed to kill three alphas in a row killed these two squids making love, and I had to stop that. Laden with pearls, I headed for shore and went home. I named this mighty machine Tall Geese 3. If you know what it's from, leave a comment. On day 90, I ran to the blue obelisk to start the alpha monkey fight. Oh, but when you know it, I forgot the artifact and the Megalodon tributes. <sighs> Son of a... Okay, now we're good. Honestly, this fight was a wash. What a joke. It was a cool boss concept, but honestly, yeah, it's a little way too easy. Hey, at least I got that tech wreck saddle, baby. That's also another reason why I wanted to do this. On day 91, I got the tech wreck saddle made and ran across the pond to level tall geese on Carnal Island and to test out my aim with the tech turrets. After a morning of fun and destruction, I returned home and leveled some of my aloes a bit more. In my notes for day 92 it says I farmed. That's not very exciting, so let's skip ahead to the last few days. Days 93 through 4, I took some time to work on the thumbnail in this video while my materials smelted, and I organized my aloe chains. When the gates to the tech cave opened, you're only allotted 5 minutes to get your tames through that door, or else they'd be left behind. So I made absolute sure that we were ready and organized. <sighs> okay, here we go. On the twilight of day 94, I opened my way into the tech cave. It was showtime. I had enough teeth, weapons, and willpower to rival that of the Smithsonian. Since I took the extra time to make sure my dinos were all lined up single file, things were going very smoothly. Years and years of greyhound hopping and flying on planes may be very efficient at pre-trip organization. We all lined up single file. Of course, it wouldn't be arc without some of the pathing messing up. With 30 seconds on the clock, I got most of my dinos through. That last aloe and Sar, my Agent Tavis, 
Well, they were the lucky ones. As soon as we were all in, and the door shut, I locked and loaded. I used my guns, not for fighting, but to act as a lure. I would aggro dinosaurs, and then they would fall down the pit into the lava. After moving the troops around, Tall Geese and I spearheaded the operation, and we went down to clear a path. My shots rang true, and I lured much of the opposition to their doom. And what I couldn't lure into the lava with my rifle, Tall Geese took out with his teeth, or his twin cannons. The cannons had a decent knockback too, and it kept me from getting dismounted many times. I was very lenient with the amount of element I was using for these guns. I had enough to last a lifetime, just about. This Uteranus gave me a fight though. It was quite the sumo battle on the bridge. I was being pushed back into the lava. But Talgi dug in his heels, and after much gnashing and thrashing, he came out on top. Around the corner there. Do you see it? A Giga. This thing was going to be tricky if it wasn't on the ledge, so it could fall into the lava. Don't mind the glitch dinos in the wall. They didn't bother me. I checked. A Rex stood next to that Giga too. This was going to be a tough obstacle to negotiate. I shot at the Rex and ran. It followed me down the hall, but eventually it lost interest. I did have the perfect setup now though. Hook, line, and sinker. I watched it melt from the safety of my perch. After the Rex died, I went to deal with the Giga. I got lucky and it slipped off the ledge. Honestly, in most of the 100 days video challenges I watch, everyone has trouble with this cave. So far it's been a complete cake run, and it hasn't even been 50 minutes yet. If you just take it slow, and use the environment to your advantage, and take the proper setup, it's not so bad. There it was, the teleport of the Overseer. The way was clear, and I was so close. Most of the cave was cleared, only one more foe stood between me and that door. Make a Carodontosaurus. I shot it a few times, but the plasma went through it. I tried my rifle. Ah, that did the trick. The way was clear. I watched the carco in the lava, and then... Blackness. My game had crashed. I feared for the worst, and when I logged in... On day 95 at 1 o'clock p.m. Yeah. Well, what of a turn of events. Thanks to this comment, I was able to roll back my single player world and start over again at day 90. I lost a bit of progress, and for some disclosure, I did use admin commands to get back some of my lost ammo and other stuff. In my mind, I already put in the work farming it and I wanted to just fight the overseer. After flying around for quite some time and a few dino wipes later, I found this black giga wandering the side of this mountain. Normally I would tame such a rarity. But I needed his heart to ascend off of this arc. I fought many battles in my soul over taming this thing or just killing it. And I chose the evil option and engaged in a harrowing fight that literally took two in-game days. The smart thing to do would be a metal dinosaur gate trap, but I was feeling quite revitalized after my restoration and decided for the sake of content to take this big bad beastie down on foot. Of course, this was easier said than done, and Zar got bit a few times. We even cut it very close on one occasion. Had Zar been bitten again, he would have been a chicken sandwich for this overgrown lizard, and I'd be out of a flyer. After leading it down to this riverbed, I stood on top of this mesa and began blasting this titanic terror with my tech rifle. Here. I'll turn off my tech helmet to show you all how dark it really is out here. I don't play with gamma settings, and yeah, if I didn't have this tech helmet, this wouldn't be happening right now. Of course, doing this caused a bunch of challenges and frustrations. The way Ark works, if a wild predator eats a corpse, it heals them back up to full health. I don't know if the same rules apply to Gigas and Karkaras, but at the time, I was starting to get a little frustrated. I know what you're thinking. Glam. Just fly home and make a trap, and then come back. Well, dear viewer, in this scenario, you would be right. In hindsight, is always 2020. But I am a person that makes trivial challenges as complicated as I possibly can to fulfill a primal desire to look as cool as possible. I shot at this thing into the morning and decided to move the battle to this river near the dreaded Red Woods. But at this point in the game, I was thicker than a bowl of oatmeal, and I could take a few punches and dish them back out. So I went in with some confidence. The only problem was an Alpha Carno was just chilling, minding its own business. 
and you all already know how I feel about things just minding their own business, I let Tall Geese do the talking for me, and we turned the Alpha Carno into Swiss cheese. After that little romp, I ran through this rotten log and shot at the Giga to get its attention. It fell into the water, and we began our bombardment, until it ran off and started eating wild dinos and healed again. Look, I used a lot of element for this, and yes, I reiterate, if I would've just went home and built a trap, I'd be one giga heart richer and laughing right now. But I do it for you. Eventually, I got it cornered in this little gully, and the tall geese's help we managed to put it down. After I grabbed its heart, I struck a pose. I don't know why I was bragging, this thing played me like a fiddle. Anyway, I was high with some adrenaline, and I decided to try and fight this alpha raptor that was hanging around with my bare fists. Of course, this was a bad idea. My tech leggings broke, and I uncrowded tall geese to kill it. Then I immediately fled home to repair my gear. The next day, another giga spawned by my base, and this time, I learned from my mistakes. And I made a standard giga trap. Two giant bear traps, and four metal gates. After luring the giga into the trap, I folded it like laundry. Another heart to add to my collection. I didn't want to waste any more time because I really, really wanted to see the Overseer and attempt to ascend, so I ran over to the Red Obelisk to fight the Alpha Dragon. I uncrowded my squad at the Red Obelisk and wasted no time in starting the fight. One thing I didn't do in my last video was let the Dragon boss music play because I fear copyright strikes, and I really don't know how the YouTube algorithm really works yet, but since I'm a relatively small channel, I'll just play the music for you all because it's so good. We entered the arena, and the dragon, black as night, flew overhead. It was quite the sight to behold. It rained fire down upon us, and I'll admit, I did this at 3 in the morning, so my game wasn't exactly on point in terms of reaction times. I was very tired. So we got hit a few times. And after the dragon landed, I whistled for the attack. I sat on the back of Tall Geese and let Shriek Auto Roar to keep us buffed. When I had the chance, I'd shoot arrows into the dragon to help out some. I thought about using tall geese to bite the dragon, but I'm glad I didn't. The dragon's fire breath was devastating. So much so, that Shriek died unfortunately. We were going through the rest of this fight with no buffs. But that didn't stop us because my cause was pure, and we slew the dragon. Of course, you may notice that the tech chest and gram unlock is missing. Allow me to explain. Remember in my last video when I said I took a few days to make the thumbnail? I used an admin command to unlock the engram so I could pose with it. Oh, you dislike that? Well, fair enough, I suppose. But in my defense, I killed the alpha dragon just now, so technically I earned it. Also, I didn't even use it after the thumbnail was made and threw it away to despawn after I took the pictures. But now I will wear it legitimately with pride. Unfortunately, I was down one new Tyrannus, and I needed another, and headed straight for the winter biome. After flying around for what felt like an eternity, just about, I lucked out and found a really good 135 male new Tyrannus wandering in the woods. Naturally, I didn't build a trap and paid the price. Don't worry, I didn't die, but I did grow exceedingly frustrated with this UD. I was using a souped up crossbow and tranking it wasn't the issue. I don't know what it is with UDs, but they always seem to want to run for water. I could knock it out here, and my plan was to leave Render and just let it wander up onto land on its own volition. Of course, it didn't do that, and it decided it wanted to stay by the water. I got distracted by some wolves, and used my bow to take care of them. I didn't want them to get brave and kill this UD that I was working so hard for. After much back and forth, I finally managed to knock him, and stood over him admiring this waterfall. Huh. This would make a very nice base location someday. And luckily for myself, there is prime meat plenty. This Spino graciously gave itself for my cause. Only problem was... Ah... Oh, I forgot a pickaxe. Hold that thought. Okay, I grabbed a sword instead. Whatever. I harvested the Spino and then killed this Argy for its meat. After taming it, I looked around for a female. Any female. I would just breed out the bad levels with this male's stats. I found a female and not long after I tamed it, as well as this mammoth because it had some really nice colors. After a little while, I was gifted a fit you Tyrannus with good stats. The day had finally arrived, faster than anticipated. I said goodbye to my tames. 
Bye, Shreddy. I'll see you back on the Lost Island. Goodbye, Boog. Take care of the bees for me. They trust you. And so do I. Waru, Ty. It's been a blast. See you around, old friend. Be good. And don't go attacking young ones anymore. After saying some tearful goodbyes, I flew into the sky and rocketed off towards the volcano. I'd finally confront the Alpha Overseer and descend off of the Ark. Ah, <sighs> here we go again. I opened the door once again and made my way into the maw of hell itself. Since this was Alpha, a whole new set of challenges awaited me as I crawled through the cave, like Arthur Pleura, but I was patient and precise with how I dealt with things. After trudging through the cave with tall geese, I noticed that there were more gigas than anticipated, and one was in the lava somehow? Okay, well that works out for me. I lured what I could into the lava, and then I took care of the car car that guarded the door. With the cave mostly cleared again, I began my descent with my aloe army. I lost a few in the lava, unfortunately. But I knew this might happen, so I brought extras just in case. We made our way up and entered into the Ark's command center. It took a moment to look around, and I was struck in wonder for a moment. I'd never seen this place outside of YouTube videos, and yet, here I was, right now. Standing where others before me stood in this challenge. It was really surreal, honestly. But I couldn't give in to my emotions now, and I steeled myself for the battle ahead. I took a moment as we crossed the bridge to look down, and it took me a moment to understand where we really were. We were miles above the Ark. And then the sheer scale of this place hit me. I took a moment to look. And I'll admit, I have a fear of heights. It made me feel a little uneasy. But I knew that I'd be fine. As we busted through the door, the Overseer materialized and we began our long battle. I rode Tall Geese into battle for safety. He was more of a comfort dino than anything else. I guess in my mind a big sturdy Rex would be better than sitting on the back of a UD. I had it set up for Otter Roar and made it follow me. So it wasn't too bad. We fought on. Wave after wave after wave of defense drones. And we made some good progress on the Overseer's health. I was hit by its laser a few times and it dismounted me and stunned my dinos. These moments were possibly the most harrowing I've ever experienced playing this game. It managed to sneak away amidst the confusion and turn into a copy of the Megapithecus. I ran in and started biting to help out the aloes, and it inevitably went down. After a few minutes, the Overseer snuck away in the confusion again and morphed into the copy of a Broodmother, and I couldn't get to my army to whistle attack. Eventually, I brute forced my way through and helped DPS, but her attention turned to me and Tall Geese. Tall Geese took a lot of the damage, but we got it sorted out. I flew into the air and helped out with my sniper and tech rifle. The drones were becoming quite the nuisance. After flying around and helping out across the battle, the Overseer turned into a copy of the Alpha Dragon, and this was it. I felt sick behind the screen, but I stomached the doubt and fired bullets as much as I could. Tall Geese tanked the defense drones for the aloes, and together we worked like a very well-oiled machine. After a few minutes of fighting, my UD died, and we'd be going forward with no buffs. I began to panic, but remained composed as the fight went on. Unfortunately, Tall Geese died next. My hope began to falter. But I had no choice but to move forward, and to keep pushing. My health started to get low, and I landed quickly to drink some med brews and hid behind a pillar to eat some more soups. I noticed my owls were starting to become very bloody, and I knew my Deodon was out of food. It ran out a while ago. It was down to the wire now. Before I knew it, it was done. I, I did it. I survived 100 days on the island. An 
after seven years, I had accomplished what I never thought was possible. I beat Ark Survival Evolved on Alpha. And with that and my ascension, so comes the close of this chapter, and a new one begins. See you in the next one. is more like pride.